Recently, I wanted to add a faux fur area rug to my living space. Unfortunately, every rug that fit my budget ended up being a compromise of attributes such as size, texture, style, and overall functionality. Eventually, I just decided to make my own. This is the process that I used, and I hope that it will inspire you to make your own as well. These are the materials that I used and that you will need as well. A faux fur throw blanket. I'm using a 50 inch by 60 inch faux fur throw blanket by Target's in-store brand, Threshold. I chose this one because I found its texture was most like that of the faux sheepskin rugs that you can find at Ikea or Pottery Barn. A mattress topper or liner. I'm using a twin sized memory foam mattress topper by the brand Room Essentials. I really liked how plush this one was and thought that it would add to the overall comfort of my final product. A grip liner or other non-skid fabric. This is an 18 inch by 15 inch grip liner that I found at the dollar store. I'll be using four of these. Because the texture of the liner is closer to that of silicone, I found that this was more functional than your typical non-skid fabric. A hot glue gun and glue sticks. Because I already had these from a previous project, I didn't need to buy them. Several sets of magnetic snaps or other closures. I found a package of these on Amazon and it includes 10 pairs of magnetic snaps. You can use any closure you desire, but I really love these snaps for their simplistic design and ease of application with hot glue. Additional materials that you'll need are a ruler, tape measure, pencil or markers, and scissors. Now you're ready to get started! First, you'll want to lay the mattress topper or liner over the throw blanket and make sure it covers the whole area that you desire. Because I'm using a twin size mattress topper to save on cost, one side is longer than the other. To make a unified piece, I'll need to cut off the excess and reattach it to the other side. If your topper or liner already fits the area of your throw blanket, you can just skip these steps. Here, I measured out the excess material, marked the edge, and made a straight cut. With the excess material, I cut smaller pieces to test whether fabric glue or hot glue would be a better adhesive. The material of the mattress topper was actually too porous to allow for the fabric glue to stay on the surface and adhere the two pieces together. The viscous texture of the hot glue ended up being perfect for this and allowed the two pieces to be affixed as one even when I tried to pull them apart. Here I've put the cut pieces in the arrangement of the final piece. I then hot glued the mattress topper pieces to one another. After gluing the mattress topper together, I made sure to trim away any misshapen or uneven edges. The unified mattress topper should look like this. Now it's time to take the grip liners and lay them across the whole area of the mattress topper.
To make a unified liner, I hot glued the individual liners together in every area where there was overlap. I attached the two pieces together by hot gluing the unified liner along the entire edge of the mattress topper. Rather than trim away the excess liner, I decided I wanted to create a sturdier and more durable edge by affixing the excess liner to the underside of the mattress topper. To do this as accurately as possible, I traced the outline of the throw blanket that I could see through the liner. On each side of the liner, I folded the liner along these clear lines. You'll know that you've done this correctly when the total area of the liner, with the edges folded over, matches that of the throw blanket. I then hot glued the liner to the underside of the mattress topper in every area where they overlap. You'll see here that just to be as accurate as possible, I outlined exactly where the edges of overlap were. I found that using a generous amount of hot glue really did the trick with keeping the liner and topper perfectly affixed to one another. To make a neat and clean edge, I cut off the excess liner and hot glued the flap down. The bottom cushion you've just created should look something like this. Now it's time to affix the magnetic snaps to both the cushion and the throw blanket. Because the snaps come in pairs, I would recommend putting one snap down on the throw blanket and placing the matching snap down on the opposite side of the cushion. For me, this kept things from getting way too confusing. I would recommend starting in the corner and making sure the snap is equidistant from each edge. This will be helpful for measuring the distance between the snaps and the corners so that you can find the midpoint and place another snap there. You'll want to be sure to repeat the measurements and markings for both the throw blanket and the cushion. Now it's time to hot glue the snaps to the spots that you've marked. Now you can snap the two pieces together to see your finished product. I'm so in love with the final product of my rug. It turned out to be everything that I had envisioned as well as being the perfect addition to my home. I especially love its versatility. Using the snaps, I can easily convert it back to a throw blanket at any time. Or if I decide that I want to use a different top piece in the future, I can easily switch it out for another throw blanket. I love that I've created a rug that's so adaptable to my changing preferences or needs.
Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll be back for more DIYs. In light of recent changes to the YouTube Partner Program, please consider subscribing and sharing this video with your friends so that this channel might eventually qualify for partner status. If you think this content is worth supporting, you can also check out the monetized version of this video on Daily Motion.